So if your battery is not holding charge, which this one doesn't, how do you diagnose that? With really, really simple tools. Uh, all you need is a voltmeter. So first you have to understand how the battery works. This is the BMS. I'm gonna cover this in a different video. This takes care of every pack of cells over here. You notice I didn't say cell, pack of cells, because this BMF controls three cells. This is a 10S 3P battery, 37 volt, and it's only charging and discharging about 100 watts. Uh, it's supposed to have a lot, at least 300, so it's only a third of a capacity. So what's going on is this BMS, the job is to cut off the voltage so it protects the cells. How does it do that? You see the positive is hooked up over here and the negative is hooked to the BMS itself. Once it senses that one of these cells is it's, uh, dropped its voltage too low, it will automatically cut off the entire battery. So you could have just one bad cell in here that is causing the issue and you could have a perfectly good battery with perfectly good cells, but it's just not working properly because of that. Make it very clear so everybody can understand. This BMS job is to protect the cells and the cells are in packs. If one of the cells or one of the packs drops under 2.9 volts or whatever the BMS is scheduled to cut off, it doesn't cut off just that pack. It cuts off completely. So you're not gonna get any power at all. That's why a bad cell can render the entire battery useless because this one cannot just use the good cells that are left and just stop charging or discharging the bad cells. As soon as one of the bad cells, as soon as one of the packs that has the bad cell goes under the voltage that this one is designed to protect, it will automatically turn off voltage for all the cells. So your other cells could have a lot of power left in them, but you cannot use it because the BMS says, nope, I gotta protect this cell over here, and it's done. First of all, what you have to do is you have to discharge the battery. So if you have a bicycle, this is from a bicycle, just run the bicycle until it stops. When the DBMS stops and doesn't give you any voltage, then you could come over and look at the cells. Take the voltmeter, put it on DC. You have to look at the configuration of this um, uh, battery. So this battery is three cells, 10 packs. Okay, so there's 30 batteries in here, three cells, 10 packs. It starts from the negative, ends with a positive over here, right? So it's going all around and then negative and positive. So the best way to verify that, each pack is connected three, three ways this way, and then it stops three ways this way, then three ways this way because it stops over here at the bottom. So how do you verify that? You have to figure out which of these cells it's telling the BMS that I'm too low and then it stops all the other cells. How do you find that out? So you take the voltmeter, put it on DC, and then check the first one. So you see this, this is the first pack towards the bottom and I'm gonna check this one out. It's gonna say I have 394. I'm gonna go to the next three. I'm gonna check them, 394. I'm gonna go to the next pack, 394. Next pack, 394, next pack, 392, okay? So there's a little bit of a slight lower voltage on, on this one. Now I'm gonna go to this pack on top. Check 374. This, 344. So 374, 344. This one is starting to be very, very weak. This one, 372. This one, 384. So this is a good pack. 339. So. This pack and this pack are getting discharged faster. Now, which battery is broken in the pack? Well, you cannot verify them when they're connected together, unfortunately. So what you have to do is, if you wanna find out which of the batteries in this pack is causing the issue and replace it, uh, you have to cut the pack away, split each battery apart, and then run a separate test on each cell to see which one is causing the problem. Because if in this pack or in this pack you have a weak cell, that weak cell will discharge very, very fast. It will bring the entire pack down, the entire three uh, pack down, and then this pack will just lose its voltage really, really fast because these two batteries will work extra time to charge the bad battery while it's discharging, and then obviously they're gonna lose their charge really, really fast. So what we know from this battery, that's why I verified all of them, these are great. These bottom ones are great. These, I think this is the good one still, 372. 384, so this is still a good one. 394, 384, so this is okay. These are great, the bottom ones. This is okay, and these are starting to be the ones that are causing the problem. So 
that's the easiest way to diagnose uh, a battery. Um, these cells are replaceable. This battery, a battery like this costs $100. So you could buy just the cells that they need to be replaced. You need some machinery that, that can do that. But that's how you diagnose um, a battery that is cutting off. Um, this bicycle only goes for about nine miles before the battery just cuts off and then you can't use it anymore. So if I'm not going to salvage this battery, at least I could salvage these cells. And I could use these cells for something else later on uh, and repair a different battery. Or I'm going to split this one out, take all these uh, packs out and verify each one of them and then just add a battery for the one that is causing the issue. As you can see, I disassembled the battery. I'm going to reassemble it with just the good packs out of it. But a way around it, it would be a lot more expensive, but it will be a lot more reliable. If they will install a BMS like this for each cell instead of for each pack, that means that if one of the cells goes bad into a three pack, then you're only going to use a third of the battery. But if you're going to much bigger batteries that are like, for example, 17S, 10P, that means that there are 17 batteries in series and 10 in parallel. If you put a, a BMS on each cell instead of the entire pack, then you will lose only 10% when one of the cells goes down because only that series cannot be used, but the pack will not be affected because they're not packed anymore. So they're doing this for cost savings and a perfectly good battery can become absolutely useless if the BMS just has one cell into a long pack that can cause problems. This is the best explanation that I could give you and uh, there is no real fix for it unless you want to spend a lot of money and build your own battery and they just put one for each cell. That will make it a lot more reliable. And that's the easiest way to diagnose it with a voltmeter. Now there's more advanced um, tools out there and uh, I'm going to cover that in a different video, but this works really, really great. Thanks for watching.